the episode opens with, a young man talks about his ordeal five years ago. Apparently, he had been bullied and this prevented him from leaving his room. He had lost hope in life and had begun to live his life aimlessly while spending his time playing video games. At that moment, a bright line shone that teleported him to a different realm. Getting there, he is met by a girl in white who congratulates him for being selected to be reincarnated after careful consideration. This happened to be done after what she termed as a careful consideration. Hearing this, the man is surprised that he is to be reincarnated. However, he is pleased and unbothered that he ended up dying in the room he kept himself. Meanwhile, she informs him that the new world he heads to be a world where magical faculty means everything due to this. She promises to grant him overpowered skills to facilitate his new life. Furthermore, she instructs him to try and enjoy his new life this time around. After a hasty consideration, the man states that he wants a nice, quiet life, a world with anime and games for him to play all day long. This coupled with the chance to doze off without realizing anything. This life, he believes, beats every other. Then he agrees to be reincarnated. While he is being reincarnated, he is determined to use the skills the angel has promised him to live a very lazy life. Shockingly, when he opens his eyes he realizes that he is a baby. While it would seem fortunate he is born to royalty, seeing him the queen is excited. On the other hand, the king is pleased most, especially since they thought of a prince who would take after the both of them would be really impressive. Looking at the prince's chest, he sees that he bears the royal insignia on his left chest. With this, he doesn't doubt the fact that the child is theirs. Meanwhile, the man, seeing that his parents are royalty, consoles himself with the thought of being eighth in line for the throne. However, the king immediately orders for a magical assessment of the prince. He seeks to know what the maximum mana level of the prince is. He believes this will be very high since the prince is being born to the Flash Princess who had defeated the Demon King. He believes this will make the prince mana level to be at least 40 or 50. Shockingly, he is told that the prince level is 2 and he has no element. This means he can only use barrier magic. Hearing this, the king is surprised. He wonders how good for nothing prince could be born to him in the Flash Princess. He believes the existence of the prince would cause outrage amongst his subject. To this, the queen agrees. They immediately decide to tell the council that the prince died during childbirth. Hearing this, the man is shocked more at the fact that he would be dying immediately after reincarnation. Since he was surrounded by awful people in his past life, he didn't think he will meet people like this in this world, while the king seems keen on disclosing the prince. The maid tries to caution him, but he orders the maids to be silent. Instead, he orders one of the maids to dispose the child in the forest. When the angel sees this, she begins to panic. When asked what happened, she reveals that she had given the man overpowered skills and no one in the human world had realized that. This happens to because the measuring device and the human world can only go up to two digits. Also, she had forgotten to give him an element. I know you're curious about what she said is level to. Well, she said it to 1002. That is an outrageous number for a human. Shortly after, the man finds himself in the forest, placed in a basket alone. He remembers the mage had sought. He can use barrier magic to save himself. He tries to use the barrier, trying to figure out a way to visualize it. On his first rule, he comes up with Jack Cuboid. This makes him pleased that the thought that magic can be so easy. Furthermore, he finds out that he can enlarge it and give it a different or color. He tries to make the cuboid into different or shapes and realizes that he can make it into anything he thinks about. Just then he finally tries to use it for himself and is able to shield himself with it. Then he raises the cube with him in it, and surprisingly, it works. This makes him realize that his power is more useful than he had thought. He believes it doesn't eyes mana. This makes him confident thug if he is attacked by a wild animal he can defend himself. Surprisingly, his thought is cut short as he is attacked by a large wolf. The wolf tries to eat him up and it ends up biting the cube around him. Seeing how functional the cubes are, he decides to create a bunch of other cubes in a bid to attacking the wolf. Unfortunately, the cubes are small and no effect on the wolf. Since this doesn't do damage to the wolf, he decides to use something bigger. He makes use of the cubes to lift multiple trees, which he throws at the wolf. The trees fall and the wolf and it also easily stands up. Then he decides to go bigger. This time, he lifts a large portion of the earth and directs it towards the wolf. Seeing the large earth approaching it, the wolf begins to beg for mercy. At first the man doesn't hear her, but when she screams louder, announcing her surrender, he stops. Later on, after the attack had been halted, the wolf reveals that it had tried to eat him in order to replenish her mana, but didn't know that he would be so strong. She seeks to know what he is, 
but he surprisingly cannot talk since he is a baby. This surprises the wolf, who thinks that his behavior is too logical for a baby. In order to be able to respond to her, he makes use of his magic to convert his put into sound. After using this, he is able to speak. At that moment, the wolf seeks to know who he is. In response, he states that his name is Haruto, who was born in a faraway kingdom, but was abandoned for his low mana level. This surprises the wolf, especially since she could sense mana emanating from the baby. The amount of mana emanating from the baby makes the wolf ask if he is the demon king reincarnate. Since he was pretty unknown in his past, he doesn't reveal that, especially since this would make him look like a loser. Due to this, he accepts that he is truly the demon king. Hearing this, the wolf is shocked to her bones. However, she sees this as a reasonable explanation, due to this, she lies on her back to admit defeat and asks him to kill her. Not wanting to do so, he states that he is fine as long as she doesn't attack him. She sees this as an utmost act of generosity. This causes her to swear to him, promising to keep that promise, especially since. She is a proud flame, Fenrir. Having heard this, Haruto refers to her as Frey and says goodbye. Since he referred to her by a name, she forms a pact with him, referring to him as her master. With this pact, she swears to devote herself to him. He finds this to be confusing, since he only shortened her name and never intended to give her a new name. However, she doesn't seem interested in what he says at this point. Suddenly he becomes weak, wondering what the problem is. Haruto realizes that it isn't a problem he can solve with magic. This L problems happen to be that of hunger, and he needs some milk to give him some. The wolf transforms into a human determined to do anything for her master, seeing her life. This makes him uncomfortable as she has no clothes on, even after she puts on skim clothes. He still complains about how eye-catchy she looks at that moment. She gets ready to give him some milk, but finds out that she has none to give. When she realizes this, she apologizes to him why. And they talk, she notices someone approaching them. Just then she asks for permission to kill them. However, Haruto cautions her not to do so, and he learns how to communicate. He urges her to ask them what they are after. Then he uses his magic to create a link with her to tell her what to say. Just then, the two are approached by a man who claims he is a relative of the baby's parents and had come to save the child. He tells them a story of how his wife was unable to give birth to a child and asks to be allowed to take the child. Flay refuses. He offers to give the child the milk he needs. Seeing this, Haruto is hungry and wants it, but she insists that he doesn't need it. Eventually she agrees and they follow the man to his house. Years later, Haruto has grown up and now living with the man. He finds himself with a new sister and a mother who loves him while he tries to blend with the family. The little girl doesn't want to be friends with him since he wants them to be close. The mother suggests that he gives her a gift. Meanwhile, alone in his room, we realize that he now has a clone of himself which he has magically made. He intends to use this on the occasion of his departure. Efforts he had put into making the clone move and speak have proved to be futile. However, this will be hard since the clone cannot move or speak. At that moment, his father calls him and he heads down to see a foo fencing set up. His father instructs him that he has to learn fencing, but he insists that he only wants to learn ancient magic. At this moment, he makes to leave, but he is stopped by his father, who assures him that he needs to learn fencing. Then he hands him a wooden sword and tastes it to attack him before he attacks him. He flies up in the air and dodges the attack, seeing this. The father is shocked. He wonders how someone waft little mana level and no element is able to do this, at this tomb. Haruto had also hit his swat on the land, causing it to break and see her waiting a hole on the ground. When his father teetered to attack him, he jumped swiftly in the air and his father shocks and says someone with a level 30 mana would be able to do that. They end the fencing for that day with a lot of questions unanswered while few were fighting. His little sister named Charlotte sees them and witnesses all that had happened. She too is shocked at the kind of skill shown by her brother. The man takes to teach him some sword fighting skills and realizes how powerful he is. This makes him realize that he could be a demon. Later on when he tells his wife about this, she believes they can still take care of him. He tells her about how the hill could be the offspring of the demon king. This supposes us since he had said earlier that the child was related to him, does this mean he is related to the demon king? The mother seems to be so bothered about guys that it gets her thinking. Even though Haruto is not her child, she is left with nothing but a heart of worry towards all that his father had told her. They however come to the conclusion that the boy could be raised as a human and taken care of. Apparently the young girl is hearing this and ponders on the thought of her brother being a demon. This makes all her astral tins about him a reality. 
she is left with the thought of her brother being a demon or a human. That brings the episode to an end. The story continues with Haruta wonders why his dad doesn't visit him like he usually does and assumes that he must be busy with something else. But Haruto doesn't mind as long as he doesn't have to do more swordsmanship training with his dad. Suddenly, Haruto hears a noise coming from outside from a maid who is looking for bandages and antiseptics to treat someone's wounds. Haruto wonders what is going on outside and turns on his magical surveillance system to find out that the castle soldiers come back heavily injured. The support unit does everything it can to heal the heavily injured soldiers, but it's not enough. Haruto goes to see his dad who is sitting quietly in the corner and asks him to explain this situation. So his dad explains that lately there has been a rash of attacks from thieves in this province. Apparently he got information about the thief's base and headed there to end them for good. But he and his army ended up getting counterattacked, even though they were well prepared and careful Haruto's dad clenches his fist. Haruto realizes that his dad messed up badly because of this failure, also demoralized the remaining uninjured soldiers. Haruto's dad thinks that this must be a grisly sight for him to see at such a young age, so he advises Haruto to go back inside. Although Haruto has his opinions to share, he remains quiet and decides to just return to his room. Haruto sees Flea making fun of the royal soldiers for getting beaten by a band of thieves. It seems she is the child here instead of Haruto, so Haruto loses his temper and tells her to shut her mouth. On his way back with Flay, Haruto secretly uses his healing magic on all the injured soldiers to completely heal them, surprising everyone, including his father. After returning to his room, Haruto takes a good night's sleep while Flay stands outside of his room waiting for him to wake up. He wakes up and opens his door to find Flay standing outside, so he asks her if she has been out there this whole time, but Flay doesn't answer him, so he realizes that she is only not responding and was waiting for him. Because of the order that he gave her, which was to shut her mouth, Haruto realizes what a stupid maid Flay is and gives her permission to talk again. After apologizing to her for losing his temper, Flay feels guilty as she thinks she has unintentionally offended him and she apologizes to him instead. Haruto forgets about it and takes Flay to the roof of the castle to show her the surveillance he has on the entire province. He reveals that he intends to find all the thieves who attacked his dad and the royal soldiers and wants to punish them with Flea's no help. Haruto locates a gang of thieves celebrating in the middle of the woods and sees that some people and soldiers as clothes are also hanging out with them. He assumes that the place these thieves are hiding must be the same place where his dad's men got ambushed. So putting all the pieces together, Haruto and Flay realize that the thieves must have known that the royal soldiers were coming to attack them because of an internal spy. So Haruto decides to wipe out all of the thieves at once and uses flight magic to head to the woods with Flay. Haruto's younger sister looks out the window and sees him flying away, so she wonders who he really is. On the other side, the thieves revealed that the captain of the soldiers is actually a spy and wants to get rid of Haruto's dad so he can return to his homeland. Haruto comes just in time for Flea to hear everything and perform stun magic to instantly petrify all of his opponents. One of the thieves still speaks out of turn so Haruto shows him his place and then turns to the thieves and soldiers' uniforms to make them confess who they really are. He investigates the soldiers and learns that they are soldiers from the neighboring empire. Apparently their plan is to infiltrate this kingdom by coming to the border province disguised as thieves with the goal of causing internal mayhem. But Flay wonders how they even managed to cross the border in the first place, as there should have been troops guarding the borders. So one of the thieves explains that they haven't, accomplice on this side who helped them do so. Haruto realized that certain accomplices must be powerful people and that they must be after his father's life. Haruto thanks the thieves for their cooperation, but he has no intention of showing any mercy as he commands Flay to burn the entire fort to the ground alongside the thieves. Before Flay lights them on fire, Haruto explains to them that this is their punishment for ambushing his dad. Flay then lights the fort on, fire accordingly alongside all of the thieves, and quietly leaves the place with Haruto, leaving no evidence of their involvement behind. On their way back, Haruto decides to send an anonymous letter to his dad to explain what happened today at the fort and goes back to his room, becoming an innocent child once again. The next day, Haruto's dad Gold's advisor learns from the anonymous letter about the spies from another kingdom and how the thieves in the fort have been completely eradicated. The advisor then confirms to Gold that what the letter claims to be true is true after getting testimony from the thieves, who barely managed to escape the fire. Still, Gold thinks that this should be thoroughly investigated and tells his advisor to squeeze more information from the spies. Gold had already figured that they were no ordinary thieves after getting ambushed. 
but he couldn't believe that the Empire was involved in this as well. What he had feared all along has come to pass, and he decides to prepare for the worst. Gold's daughter, Charlotte, wonders who took care of the bad guys. And Gold assumes that it must be no one else other than Flay, since she has no empathy and is also way stronger than him being a demon. Gold tells Charlotte that Flay wants to establish her dominance over the monsters of this province. So he thinks she might have ended up establishing her dominance over the thieves instead. But Charlotte knows that Haruto is involved in this as well. So she takes her leave from Gold and goes to Flay because she believes she is the only one who can answer her questions. She finds Flay and straightforwardly asks her if there are two Haruto as she saw him flying with Flay. But from what she knows, Haruto shouldn't have enough mana to fly, so she went to his room to check on him and found him sleeping like a dog. Charlotte also reveals that she didn't sense the usual menacing or a coming from the sleeping Haruto. So she assumes he is a doppelganger. Flay gets impressed by the little girl's perceptions and reveals to her that Haruto has been actually blessed with a measurable power that even exceeds human limits. She brags about how marvelous her beloved Haruto is, but doesn't explain how there are two Harutos at the same time. For context, the one that Charlotte saw in the room was just a fake created using magic. Anyway, Charlotte changes her question and asks Flay who Haruto actually is. Instead of giving an answer, Flay tells Charlotte to not worry over trivial matters and that she should mind her own business, she wants to grow big like her. Later, Flay informs Haruto that Charlotte knows about his leaving the castle last night and also found out about his clone, so it's natural for Charlotte to think Haruto is incredibly suspicious. So Haruto decides to set up more surveillance on Charlotte to keep track of her movements so that she doesn't accidentally discover Haruto's shenanigans again. Later at night, Haruto goes out of his room to go to the toilet, and Charlotte secretly follows him to spy on him. Haruto realizes that he is being followed by Charlotte, so he decides to confront her, but as he turns around, Charlotte immediately runs away. Later, when he goes to take a long, refreshing bath, Charlotte secretly follows him there too, to keep an eye on him. He keeps doing so to find her brother's secret and begins to keep an eye on him when he is training with gold, studying, having a normal conversation with Flay, or again when having a bath. Still, Haruto perfectly acts like a normal kid to get around her suspicions. After a week of spying, everything almost turned normal. Haruto's mom Natalia decides to take Charlotte on a trip with her as the annual festival is coming shortly. Gold explains to Haruto that he is the one who usually goes on a trip at this time of the year but this time Natalia wants to go. Haruto tells Natalia to take Flay with her, but Natalia can't do that as she believes Flay is running errands for Haruto. Haruto also remembers that he has asked Flay to intimidate the monsters of this province so that they don't attack nearby towns and villages. One night, Haruto's surveillance alarm, which he put on to keep an eye on Charlotte, wakes him up and he realizes something's definitely wrong. Apparently, the Empire soldiers have ambushed Natalia and Charlotte midway through their journey, and the soldiers are having a hard time defending themselves. Natalia tries to escape, while carrying Charlotte in her arms, but the Empire soldiers use their magic to catch them and hurt Natalia's leg. One of Haruto's magic spells secretly takes control over Charlotte and she guides the escape direction to Natalia. They hurry to find a giant cliff and Natalia jumps off with the help of her magic and lands with minimum damage. Charlotte tells Natalia that there is a place to hide nearby. When they find a beautiful, bright cave, realizing that there must be someone else who is helping Charlotte give directions, Natalia decides to look for them, thinking they must be heroes of justice. She tells Charlotte to stay inside the cave and goes outside to see that the cave entrance has been sealed off using illusion magic. Conveniently, the Empire soldiers find Natalia at the same time, so she decides to end herself rather than get tortured by these Empire soldiers. Haruto gets furious and defeats all the Empire soldiers in mere seconds. Afterwards, he carries Natalia back inside the cave and hides his presence, so that Charlotte doesn't see him. He also changes his voice and tells Charlotte to take care of her unconscious mom while help comes for them. Charlotte easily recognizes the evil aura being emitted by Haruto and wonders why he saved them if he is evil. So she confronts Haruto, asking him whether he is a hero of justice. Haruto's brain starts to shut down as he believes Charlotte's question to be absurd and just plays along by saying yes repeatedly. So Charlotte, with her small brain, assumes that Haruto got his powers to take care of the bad guys and comes closer to Haruto to apologize to him for having the wrong perception of him. Haruto tells Charlotte to keep his Hero of Justice identity a secret, so Charlotte agrees and promises to even lie to her father for him. 
Haruto then takes his leave from Charlotte, making an excuse that he has to do his hero work when he actually needs to get back to the castle so that the others don't get suspicious. Later at the castle, Gold gets informed by his advisor that they have received an anonymous letter about Natalia and Charlotte. According to the letter, both his wife and daughter are safe and Flay has joined them and is escorting them as they speak. Although a number of Natalia's bodyguards were injured, there are no casualties, and all of them have been fully healed. So Gold finally feels relieved and asks Haruto what he thinks about this anonymous helper. Haruto thinks that they are heroes of justice and tells Gold that the heroes of justice will take care of the Empire soldiers whenever needed again. But saying there was Haruto's biggest blunder, as the letter didn't reveal that the people who attacked Natalia were Empire soldiers. But before Gold can realize his son is the hero of justice, Haruto makes an excuse and saves himself from suspicion. Charlotte and Natalia finally return home. And after hugging Gold, Charlotte goes to hug her brother, whom she never talked to before. That brings the episode to an end. The story continues with Charlotte barges into Haruto's room because she wants to play with him. Haruto gets mad at her for not knocking before coming in as he is busy surveilling the castle, so Charlotte apologizes to him by hugging him. Haruto explains to us that Charlotte has been staying close to him after learning Haruto is actually a hero, just like she did when she thought he was a villain. However, Haruto likes it because he can pet her whenever he wants to. Charlotte notices the hologram video footage behind Haruto and asks him what kind of sorcery this is. Haruto explains that he is using surveillance magic to keep an eye on everything, but knowing that this magic doesn't exist in this world. Haruto makes an excuse to Charlotte that this magic is rare and quite ancient. Speaking of ancient magic, Haruto reveals that he has also told a similar lie to his dad, that he is studying about ancient and lost magic. Since Haruto is claiming to be studying ancient magic, Charlotte offers to help him learn more about lost magic by taking him to the castle's archives. The castle's archive is actually a huge library which amazes Haruto. He had never imagined such a repository of knowledge would exist right in the palm of his hands. While he is still taking in the beauty of the library hall, Charlotte quickly gathers some books of her own liking and gives them to Haruto. They both begin to read the first book and Haruto learns about the reactivation of ancient magic. According to the book's information, ancient magic doesn't have any sort of attribute since. Haruto's barrier magic isn't related to earth, water, fire, or wind attributes. He realizes that his magic can also be regarded as ancient magic. Charlotte tells Haruto that although she can't read very well, she takes help from Gold, Natalia, or even Flay to help her read it, and she wants Haruto's help too so that she can learn more. Charlotte doesn't wait for Haruto's answer and immediately sits on his lap to have a better view of the book. Haruto activates his big brother's skills and helps her read what's in the book. He even reads some interesting stories in the books that remind him of anime. So Haruto begins to complain as there is no such thing as anime in this world. Charlotte hears Haruto's loud thoughts and asks what anime is. Seeing her stubbornness, Haruto explains that anime is Charlotte doesn't understand his explanation, so he tells her that anime is basically a drawing that can move. She thinks anime is also a form of magic and wants to see it, so Haruto promises to do his best so that she can watch anime. He began working hard to please his sister and after two weeks he gained access to the internet. He then shows the magical tool to Charlotte after turning on kids mode and she uses the internet to watch an anime. Seeing a girl in the anime move, Charlotte becomes amazed. But she finds a major flaw as she doesn't understand what language the girl is speaking in the anime. So rather than adding subtitles to this world's language, our genius hero decides to teach little Charlotte the entire Japanese language. He makes Charlotte watch a language learning course, and she masters the basics in less than two hours. After learning Japanese, Charlotte continues being watching anime and after two weeks, she comes barging into Haruto's room again to watch another anime. Seeing that Charlotte is basically addicted, Haruto wants to stop her from watching, but at the same time he cannot let his sister not have fun. But then he remembers that he is only Chad. So he forbids Charlotte from watching TV for more than 3 hours a day, which is still a crazy amount of time, but not crazy enough as Charlotte wants to watch all day. She cannot defy her brother and they quietly go to eat together. At the dinner table, Charlotte begins to doze off, which is the side effect of straining her eyes while watching too much anime. Her parents get concerned and ask Haruto why she looks so tired when she only hung out in his room all day. Before Haruto reveals the truth, Charlotte wakes up and lies to her mother, saying that she was only researching ancient magic. Natalia thinks that it's good that both siblings are learning together and tells Haruto to look after Charlotte so that she doesn't lose track of time. After dinner, 
Haruto heads back to his room and Charlotte follows him again as she wants to watch more anime. But Haruto makes it clear that even if she follows into his grave, he won't let her watch more anime. So Charlotte becomes upset and walks away before going to sleep. Haruto goes for a late night shower and Charlotte follows him there again as she still wants to watch anime. Charlotte sees a mark on Haruto's chest and assumes that it's the crest of the Hero of Justice. Haruto goes on with her wrong assumptions as he doesn't care anymore and continues taking a bath. Afterwards, Haruto forces Charlotte to go back to her room and then he goes to sleep, but just as he closes his eyes, Charlotte yet again follows into his bed, this time acting like she has slept already so that he can't scold her. Their mother Natalia peeks at them and can't believe how well they are getting along all of a sudden. The next morning, Gold and his soldiers take an urgent leave from the castle as he needs to take care of some thieves who are causing an uproar. Natalia tells Gold to be careful and the family bids him their goodbyes. Later in Haruto's room Charlotte that's so worried for her father that she even forgets about her anime addiction. Haruto tries to cheer her up and tells her not to worry as their father is quite a capable man. Charlotte questions why people choose to be thieves, and Haruto explains that it's because of a power struggle that has recently popped up all over their country. Charlotte wants everyone in this world to live happily so that no bad deeds left in this world. But Haruto knows that making everyone happy at the same time is impossible to achieve. Since Haruto is the hero of justice in Charlotte's eyes, she tells him to kill the thieves rather than put their father in danger. In her opinion, that's what Haruto's extraordinary powers should be used for. She even begins to charm him with her eyes, so Haruto has no choice but to go help his dad. It seems Charlotte has seen too many Power Rangers in these two weeks as she asks Haruto to transform into his hero version before going to fight. She eagerly waits for him to transform, so he makes up a flashy move and transforms. Charlotte gets super impressed and wants to come along with Haruto to watch his heroic act, but he can't let that happen, because that would clearly reveal his identity in front of Gold. But seeing Charlotte become disappointed, Haruto comes up with a quick plan and uses his surveillance magic to summon a holographic screen so that she can watch him using that. Because of this, Charlotte's mood lightens up again and she thanks him. Haruto then leaves the room and flies to the forest to look for the thieves. He blames Charlotte for getting him involved in things in which he didn't need to get involved. But it's his little sister, so he has no choice but to comply, and he gives off a sigh before using his surveillance magic. After looking for the thieves for a few seconds, Haruto easily locates them and uses his barrier magic to close their possible escape routes. Haruto thinks that he should just leave them, so that Gold and his army can take credit. But then he remembers that Charlotte is watching his every move from home and will get upset if she doesn't see him in action. So he flies to the thieves' location and jumps down claiming to be the hero of justice. Seeing Haruto's clothes, the thieves think that he is just a clown and go to attack him anyway. Haruto teaches them a lesson by using kicks and rapid punches. Haruto beats them so much that they are left unconscious. So he thinks he went a little overboard. Conveniently, Gold and his army reach the place just as Haruto finishes their job and asks him for his identity. Seeing Haruto's uncanny outfit, Gold doesn't think that he is associated with the thieves and concludes that this isn't a mere internal conflict. He asks the Lelich Acta Haruto if he defeated all of the thieves by himself, but Haruto hesitates to answer. So Gold thinks he came out rude and introduces himself. He then asks for Lelich's name, but he fails to come up with any intel's Gold that his name is Donoyet. Gold thinks that it is actually his name and assumes that Donoyet is the same hero of justice who rescued his wife and daughter prior to this incident. Haruto stays in character and tells Gold that he is in fact the hero of justice. Gold wonders why he is helping his family and asks Haruto what his goal is. So Haruto comes up with the lie that he only wishes for justice and that his goal is to spread absolute justice. Haruto's dumb act even embarrasses himself, so he retreats and flies off, leaving Gold and his army totally stunned. The Haruto then comes back to his room, fully exhausted and gets praised by Charlotte, who tells him he is very cool, although she sees that Haruto can hardly move. She tells him to fight someone again, so to keep his little sister's request, Haruto disguises himself as Lelich once again and goes to fight more criminals. Seeing her brother fight becomes Charlotte's new form of entertainment, and she makes him fight again and again. After doing an honest day's work, Haruto falls flat on his bed, but he feels happy that he is now a hero in his little sister's eyes. The next morning Haruto decides to do something about Charlotte's over-attachment towards him and creates a perfect clone of himself that even acts the same as him. Haruto's clones' responses are on point which even amazes Haruto. 
Even though he is its creator, Haruto explains that he studied hard at the library and was able to make a copy robot with the scraps of information that he found in the books. With this invention, Haruto believes that he can finally hold up in his room. Charlotte reveals herself to be under the bed sheets and sees two Haruto standing, so she gets surprised and wonders which one is the real one. Flay comes to ask Haruto to do some work, but he doesn't want to intel his clone to do it. But his clone has the same character as him so it tells him to do the work. Later the royal family's children visit Gold's castle and the prince Leia's complaints about the place being rusty. The princess Marianne tells the prince not to be rude and tells him to behave himself. Gold welcomes the prince and the princess to his castle, telling them that he feels honored that they have come all this way to grace them with their presence. Rather than greeting Prince Leia's gets more interested with the boy of his same age Haruto, and seeing his hair color mismatch with the others. He assumes that Haruto is adopted and Haruto wonders if Leia's and Marianne are his real siblings since he knows that he is also from the royal family. Leia's try to make himself look high in front of Haruto and tells them that they should respect him as he is the next king of this country. So Gold properly bows to Leia's and apologizes to him if he has unwillingly offended him in any way. Marianne again tells Leia's to show some manners, but he remains determined to be rude and even insults his own sister. Haruto wonders how someone can be so stupid and glares at Leia's and all. Leia's of course notices that and decides to insult Haruto. The Things continue at the castle Charlotte takes a look at Haruto's live surveillance footage and sees that there is a suspicious person in the middle of the forest, so she reports it to her elder brother. And Haruto sees that these people look like they are burglars. Haruto explains to us that his sister Charlotte has recently become quite obsessed with patrolling their property because she thinks Haruto is busy doing other things. Flay barges inside the room, asking Haruto if he is Haruto since she has heard from the little girl Charlotte that he has been fighting the wrong doors alone recently. Flay proposes to assist him in his heroic work from now on, and again requests that he take her with him. Charlotte also thinks that it would be a good idea for Flay to join Haruto, but he thinks she will be only a nuisance to an overpowered hero like him. So he tries to turn it around on Flay and asks her if she is not busy herself. He tells her that she should do what the castle lord has tasked her with, but Flay explains that she has done today's work of cleaning the entire courtyard, and reveals that she has also successfully suppressed the demons around this area. So Haruto wonders what excuses he should now make so that he doesn't have to take Flay with him. Charlotte gets excited to hear the Flay will be fighting bandits, and begins to imagine her as a hero too. Charlotte tells them that she has heard various stories about heroes having partners or psychics to rescue them whenever they are in crisis, so she also wants Flay to be the partner of Haruto, the hero of justice. Flay couldn't agree more and claims that even though she is far less powerful than Haruto, she can help him a little with both Flay and Charlotte requesting Haruto. He is left with no other option but to accept Flay as psychics. He takes Flay away to have a private talk and tells her that the only reason he is not taking her with him is because she gets too rough with her opponents, which is not very child-friendly. So he asks Flay to be less aggressive in battle. Because he cannot let Charlotte see any bloody scenes, Flay understands, and so they begin their journey to find the four burglars. Meanwhile, the four burglars are discussing how they won't be starving for a few days, as they have harvested quite a good amount of fortune. Zero aka, Lelich aka Haruto makes his heroic entry, telling the burglars that he is the dark warrior of this world, and then wishes to eliminate the darkness. As the burglars begin to wonder who this clown is, another clown appears behind them, calling herself the Red Warrior, but it's actually just Flay and Haruto. Flay decides to immediately end this in incantation, her fire magic to use it against the burglars and burn them all. But Haruto stops her just in time, reminding her that he cannot let Charlotte see any gore. But Flea proceeds to burn the burglars anyway, so Haruto puts a barrier on the foul burglars so that Flay's attacks don't hit them any longer. Flay wonders why her attacks are getting blocked in midair, but she doesn't comprehend that her master is behind this. So she uses more powerful fire magic to tear down the shield that the burglars are using. But before she can do that, Haruto immediately smacks her head with a punch and again reminds her that the scene cannot be violent. Still, Flay doesn't understand what Haruto is saying and proceeds to burn the burglars with her magic. Haruto can't stand this idiot beside him anymore, so he tells Flay to go home right now. Flay thinks that Haruto desires to beat the burglars himself, so she decides to stand behind him instead of going back to the castle. After dealing with the burglars, Haruto returns home and falls flat on his bed to take a rest. 
He can't believe that his mate is so dumb and decides to go to sleep, but Charlotte doesn't let him have a single moment of peace and comes to his room to tell him how good he and Flay were looking when they fought the bad guys. Charlotte tells them that she wants to see both of them fight again, even though it just ended, and Flay promises to put on a good show for her next time, but Haruto decides that he will never take Flay with him again, as she might destroy his entire reputation as Charlotte's elder brother. In the meantime, Charlotte teaches Flay's signature move to use on the bad guys and gives her thorough instructions on how to use it. Haruto can't take this stupidity anymore, so he wonders when he will be able to live a peaceful life. On the other side, the Crown Prince Laius punches his pillow as he cannot take the humiliation of getting beaten by Haruto. He questions why things went south like this, as he is supposed to be the next king who inherits the bloodline of the Shining Princes so he only wanted to make Haruto's family realize how high and mighty he is and that is why he tried to pick a fight with Haruto. But things went south so Laius again wonders how a level 2 mages like Haruto is so powerful. The minister calls, Laius for dinner, and although he doesn't want to go, he puts his clothes on and heads to the hall. The minister then advises Laius to invite Charlotte to tomorrow's convention, as he will need someone to talk with on the road. But Laius expresses that he doesn't need to talk with other people. So the minister makes it clear that it's his majesty's direct orders, so Laius has no other option but to do so. It's also time for dinner at Gold's castle, and Charlotte calls her big brother Haruto for dinner. She apologizes for not knocking, but Haruto is already used to it, so he quietly heads to the dining hall. Haruto sees how luxurious the dishes look, while his clone laments how Haruto is making him work tirelessly all day. The clone gets depressed because he feels that there is no use left for him and jumps on the bed to sulk alone. Haruto moves on thinking it's normal and keeps eating his meal. Charlotte mentions to him that she will participate in tomorrow's inspection as she reveals that she just got an invitation personally from the prince to go there. Haruto can't let the stupid prince lurk around his little sister, so he decides to go to the inspection as well. At night he wonders what he should do and how he should prepare himself for tomorrow. He first investigates the travel route to the inspection to see if there are any unwanted traps in the road. That's when he sees a large group of evil mages using a summoning circle, and it's clear to Haruto that these mages are up to no good. Haruto decides to personally go and see what these mages trying to summon. So he immediately heads their disguise as the Dark Warrior, asking one of the mages what they are doing here. The other mage immediately gets hostile, seeing an imposter among them. So they decide to kill Haruto. But Haruto kills them instead with one blow of his overwhelming magic, and shows them their place. One of the mages who survived the attack sacrifices himself to complete the evil summoning circle, and summons dozens of undead soldiers out of it. But Haruto doesn't get scared, and instead he begins slashing them one after another using his sword. The skeletons try surrounding Haruto, but it's no use as he is the strongest, seeing that this strategy is not working. The evil mages summon a giant rock golem to attack Haruto, but he finds the golem's weak spot, attacks its spirit core and rewrites the spell to turn all of the skeleton and the golem on his side. Then Haruto captures everyone and asks the leader of the group why they were doing this, but the leader remains silent so Haruto decides to bury all of them alive if they are unwilling to tell him the truth. As the member of this mages group begin to beg for their lives, their leader finally opens up his mouth and reveals that they are the summer unit directly working under the Elder Princess, and were planning to cause an incursion on the upcoming inspection tomorrow. Haruto asks why they would do something like that, and the leader reveals that their purpose is to assassinate Charlotte Zenfis. Haruto wonders why the Elder Princess plans to assassinate Charlotte and realizes that she must have considered her a threat, since Charlotte possesses the potential to surpass even the Royal Elder Princess. The Haruto finally realizes why the Imperial soldiers attacked his father as well as his mother and Charlotte. It's because the Empress is willing to sacrifice everything for her position, and considering that Haruto's family is a potential threat, she doesn't want Haruto's family to live. Haruto vents his anger on the leader first, but he realizes that there is no point in going research and that he should take things slowly. The next day both Haruto and Charlotte head to the inspection, with the prince and princess, and Charlotte mentions how Laius lost against Haruto the other day. Haruto tries to ease the unnecessary tension caused by Charlotte, but that infuriates Laius even more, Laius calms down and mentions how Haruto didn't use any elemental magic in their duel. He wonders if Haruto is the demon reincarnation, as there is no explanation for how Haruto's magic works otherwise. Haruto doesn't understand what Laius means and turns to Charlotte, asking her what demon reincarnation is. 
Charlotte explains that if a demon and a human get married, they give birth to an offspring who has a very low chance of displaying demonic traits and looks like a human even though they have demonic powers. Marianne accepts Charlotte's explanation and adds that the demi-demons have extraordinary athletic and powerful magic powers. But seeing that Haruto neither his horns nor his eyes and ears look any different, Marianne doesn't think Haruto is half-demon. Charlotte thinks that she should also take part in describing Haruto's attributes and adds that Haruto's body feels very smooth and delicate. She proudly reveals that she showers with him a lot and hence knows how his body. This hearing that Laius and Marianne get weirder out and call Haruto shameless and a degenerate for showering with his own sister. Haruto tries to explain, but knowing that there's no point in doing so, he remains silent. Charlotte wonders what's wrong and asks Laius if she is not supposed to take a shower with her brother. Marianne tries to tell her that there is a deeper meaning to men and women showing each other their skin. But before she can say anything else, her brain gets overloaded with emotions. Thankfully, this conversation ends as the carriage reaches its destination. After coming out of the carriage, the group sees a large golden wheat field and is amazed by its beauty. Charlotte immediately runs inside the field to have fun, so Marianne follows her too while they are enjoying themselves. Haruto goes to talk with his father in private and reveals to him that the elder princess wants to assassinate Charlotte. Gold explains that he already knows of this. As the Dark Warrior sent him a message yesterday about the evil group of mages plotting against Charlotte, Gold doesn't know what to do in such a situation, so Haruto tells him that they should just get rid of the Elder Princess. But Gold tells him not to think that way, as the country currently needs the Elder Princess to keep the Ill King's position safe. In other words, if the Elder Princess were to die, it would lead to civil strife in the country. Gold tells Haruto about the story of 12 years ago when the king led a crusade force and one of the members Gisalot Ordeus single-handedly took the head of the demon king. Because of that the king married her, and now she becoming the elder princess, wants the kingdom for herself because of her greed. But Gold thinks that everything will turn around once someone stronger than the queen stands up against her. In that case, Haruto asks Gold to be the next king, but he explains that he is neither good at politics nor at controlling the country but Gold thinks that Charlotte will be better than him, in hopes that maybe one day she will be able to lead the country. So, to do so, Gold tells Haruto to protect his sister until she becomes queen. That brings the episode to an end.